I just want an overview basically what we mean by very simple secondary behavior. And I'm going to talk about it from the frequency response. Hopefully this is an area that people are fairly comfortable with and may have seen it. But if you haven't seen it, it's good to actually just sort of see the basics and the, and the notation that are typically be used. So when I talk about second order low pass structure, and I'm just going to look at the low pass, we have 1 over 1 tau squared s squared because it's a second order system. If it's a and then if it's a tip, simple system, let's say I had one first order and another first order cascaded, then I would imagine getting something like two tau here, if it's two identical taus. Uh, if they're different taus, I might get something that shifts a little bit, but I'd always get something that would give me nice real roots. But it's possible to get imaginary roots, and people always wonder, well, why do I want to do this? Well, sometimes I want to get very tight frequency cutoffs, whether it be low-pass, band-pass, or high-pass filters. And so we'll often want to look at what is the Q. To get higher Q often means it's going to be a little more um, expensive, either in terms of complexity or circuit topology or something of that sort. If I have inductors, typically that's a nice way to go, but those are also very costly items in most integrated circuit approaches. If you haven't thought about the frequency response of this, if Q is about 0.7, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, you're going to find a nice structure where it's going to be nearly 1 per gain here and drops off with 40 dB per decade here, or basically a second, basically integrated once and integrated twice. Okay, so 1 over S squared. And in between, it's actually going to have some sort of drop in here. Looks very much like a first order filter, but now it actually will move into it, two of them sort of together. As I begin to increase the Q a little bit, what I notice is that I get something that's relatively flat, but it seems like it's flatter a little longer, and then it drops off, and you think, oh, I get more of my band to work with. This is a good idea. I might even imagine if I look to the step response, I'm responding a little faster. This seems like a good idea. The problem is, is if I go just a little further, and almost everything that has some variability, unless you can control it, let's say with floating gate elements or something equivalent, you know, now I'm going to get some very different change in my frequency response. Maybe I want to, and of course, it's now, it rises some, but I also get a much steeper drop at this edge. And so maybe that's something I want to work with. If I get to a higher Q, what I find is that I can definitely get a, strong, a much higher bump. It's a steeper region, so a Q of 3, say a Q of 7.1. Even sharper here, you can see a very sharp response and a sharp fall off, and I may want to use this. These are certainly much sharper than the 40 dB per decade drop off ahead here. So certainly a couple things are important. One, higher Q means I get a narrower band, and the width is roughly going to be sort of one over the, the quality factor, and so that gives you a sense of the steepness. I also know on a low pass structure, the gain at Q, or gain right at omega equal to one over tau, right, which would be right basically when these two disappear because it's right at that point where they're going to subtract off because uh, the imaginary numbers, it basically now turns out to be roughly the, the Q itself. These are all really good properties to notice and to be very aware of. And hopefully the review is helpful. And if this is the first time you've seen it, hopefully this gives you a sense of the kind of things that you want to be looking for when you work with these structures.